It's party time. Welcome to another episode of the Chad Brather Show. It's Monday. I hope everybody had a great weekend. We are in the Mothership Studio 22, uploading all the information that you need as my favorite person, Kayla, and let's love Brandon fly us into the nether regions of all things insanity. And trust me when I tell you, it is purely insane. The asylums are empty and the crazies are not only running the street, but they are sitting in office, calling themselves elected officials. And we're having to live with the results of everything that's going on. Sarah Gonzalez. Yes. Hi. Hi. The host of the News and Why It Matters. And of course, uh, the the uh, mother of this flagship known as American Beauty by Sarah.com. me. How's business going? Great. It's Good. great. We are, you know, I've been teasing for a while. We've got some really, really exciting things coming up, including expansions like anywhere you could possibly imagine. Yeah. So we're trying to cover the entire beauty space mm -hmm. make sure everyone can get their alternative product so it's it's a it's a quite a long process but you got to make sure you do it right yeah and you're qualified for beauty you're qualified for it i think i mean you, like you got the beauty so. thing nailed down sarah listen people accuse me of wearing too much makeup but i'll just say i just like testing the product too much makeup fake boobs right. all the stuff I, right all of these yeah. i've seen it yeah. I've seen it. Yeah. It's amazing no. to me. Do, do, do men like on the Twitter sphere in that universe, do they think like that's an insult to say, oh, you're, you, you know, they. I, yes. Like, Be, they also accuse me. misogynistic. Yes. And they also accuse me of being anorexic. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> you just called me skinny. Thank you. Let me you. go back and post a fat pic yeah, of myself. I'm like, wow, you think I was feeling fat today, but not anymore. Thank you. <laughs> Let me put on these yoga pants. You can see how many dimples are in my ass. <laughs> All right, so there's so much craziness to get into. A lot of it you guys are well aware of, uh, but we're going to rehash it because that's what we do. Uh, there's so much that I need to get into, want to get into, but I don't know. Okay, so let me tell you where I'm at. Okay. All right, first of all, great weekend of shows. We were in Midland, Texas. We were in Roanoke, Texas. We got a little break this weekend, and then we're headed to Fort Smith, Arkansas on the 14th. And more and more stuff going on. I'm still toying around with the idea of only doing 24 shows in 2024. 24 and 24. Mm -hmm. Select cities. We've just now booked uh, more in South Dakota and Wyoming because that's where my people mm. are. And uh, we're going to Cincinnati. We've got Pennsylvania. We've got more. We're going up north. All mm -hmm. right. We're going to be doing some stuff. More and more shows booked for this year because I told my agent, I said, get it in now. Right. Because 24, we're going to chill a little bit. He doesn't like that. He doesn't believe me. Nobody believes me. I've been touring full time since 2015. Pop, we're going to yeah. go it, chill. It's time for a yeah. little bit of a break. A little bit of a break. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see if I'm capable of that, Sarah. But <laughs> we may have to uh, force you. There's a record label, a new record label. I'm going to make a little announcement. They're going to get mad at me for doing it, but I don't care. Uh, <laughs> there's a record label out of uh, Nashville. Hold on. If you ever tell Chad something, expect that he will announce it on the show. I'm going to say it. We're going to talk about <laughs> he it. He has a long running history of yeah. this. Well, I think it helps keep people accountable. <laughs> Because, hey, I put it out there. So uh, there, there's, a, there's a group that formed a new uh, non-woke record label mm -hmm. in Nashville. Country music. Actually, real country music. If you saw the CMT Awards last night, these guys are about real country music. Real multi-platinum songwriter. I mean, they, these guys got it going on. So they've been after me for about six months to sign a deal with them. I was the first person they came after. And uh, they're not used to being told no. And I told them no five or six times. Uh, not in a bad way. Mm -hmm. We just, you know how negotiations mm -hmm. go. The deal wasn't right. And I want, but I wanted to work with them. I was like, I love these guys. I think they're great. I think what they're doing, I love their mission. I think we finally came to some resolution over this weekend, which is going to result in some really good creative stuff that I think the world needs right now. Mm. Because um, when Kelsey Ballerini, I didn't watch the CMT Awards last night. I didn't know the CMT Awards were happening. Yeah. All right. Country Music Television Awards. Didn't even know they were happening. Apparently, this is awards season. Who knew? Mm. I started seeing, you know, clips of my buddy Cody Johnson singing his song Human. And I was like, did they have an award show? Apparently yeah. they did. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you guys remember or not, but last Monday, a trans activist, just last Monday, a trans activist went into a Christian school in Nashville, Tennessee, the home of country music, and killed six Christians at a Christian school, three of which were children. Mm -hmm. And we've dealt with the aftermath of that. They still haven't released the manifesto. Mm -hmm. Where's the manifesto? Mm -hmm. It's in the possession of the FBI, along with Epstein's client list mm -hmm. and all these other things. Where truth goes to die, basically. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I want to read the manifesto. I want to see this thing. So, uh, so apparently country music thought it'd be a good idea while they were in Austin, Texas, filming the CMTs 
to uh, have Kelsey Ballerini, who I think is a good person. I think she's just not wise. Mm. Do a show dancing around with a bunch of drag queens. Oh, we're going to play it. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to see it. Uh, and when we play the clip, I just want to remind you guys that um, the girls with the big legs, those are guys. <laughs> All right. You should be able to tell out which one is the biological female uh, and which one's Kelsey. So uh, they decided it was a good idea to do that. It, to play a song called, If You Go Down, I'm Going Down With You. That's, that's, the, that's the worst part of it. It is. It is. Now, again, we have consistently on this show and other places, we've consistently talked about how trans is one thing, drag is another thing. But now it's amazing to me that culturally the mainstream mm -hmm. is bringing it all together as, as a one kind of thing. Mm -hmm. you, you, you go at one, you go at another. I, and again, we'll go ahead and say, Sarah, and I'll say, we don't care if you want to do drag. We don't care what you want to do. And our heart goes out to you if you're wrestling with a gender dysphoria and a mental thing that makes you feel like you're not comfortable in your own body. I promise you, I love you. God bless you. I have compassion for you. Until you politicize it and create an agenda, you got to drive down somebody's throat. And if you're in the drag community, you start including children. That's a whole other deal. Mm -hmm. You start swinging your wang around in front of kids. That's a whole other deal. So go ahead, play play a little bit of the clip. This is country music. This is their. I mean, this is this is the Nashville. This is what this is the what represents Nashville, the mm -hmm. country music center of the universe. Yeah. This is what they decided to do just six days after. A shooting in their in their town. Play the clip. Now that's a female. Violet. The others, her backup dancers, are dudes. All right, so several people, I tweeted about this, and I, I thought this was bad taste, bad form, bad idea. Several people in the country music, in the national community, sent me messages saying, listen, we, you know, we obviously, we stand in solidarity with people, blah, 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 but this was in poor taste. And it was in poor taste. Uh, not the route you want to take in this when you start taking men who dress up like women and, and things like that and parading it out in front of a community that literally is still grieving. I mean, did you do you know the full lyrics of this song? Uh, I do. Did you look them up? Yeah, you got them there with you. It's horrifying. Yeah, play some. Talk, talk, talk okay. to me. Read some of them. So, uh, if I got an aisle with a mess, I gotta clean up. I know you'll be showing up with bleach. What would that mean? I don't know because later it says. Uh, I keep all your secrets by the dozen. You know where my skeletons sleep. Hypothetically, if you ever kill your husband, hand on the Bible, I'd be lying through my teeth. Our bodies are buried and they're in the same ditch. So even if I wanted to, I can't snitch. I mean, that is... It's a big difference from Earl has to die. Well, right. But <laughs> also, like, you probably shouldn't sing a song referencing death and cleaning up after where you the killed some. Are, yeah. Right. And, and, ha and bringing bleach to something after a bunch of babies were just murdered. Yeah. Pro like, probably shouldn't be singing that. Yeah. Because it's one thing to, to just say, she, I mean, I still think it was in poor taste, but it's one thing she could say, oh, if you go down, I'm going down too. That just means like going to prison or whatever. But well, I mean, you're ta you're bringing up bodies and skeletons and killing. But it's not just country music. The president of the United States, as well as his press secretary, decided on March 30th, just a couple days after the shooting, to have a proclamation of Transgender Day of Visibility. Now, I don't know what we're wanting to see you do to make you so visible. Uh, pretty visible already, I'd but, say. But yeah, but this was a whole, this whole thing is, it, it was a very rousing speech. I mean, as rousing as Joe Biden can give, I mean, he was very impassioned with whoever his speechwriter was who put this together. God knows Joe didn't write these words. Um, but he said, transgender Americans shape our nation's soul. Uh, what? What? <laughs> What? Uh, now, again, I'm going to go back to the fact that John Hopkins uh, University 
uh, classified gender dysphoria as a mental illness. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's your way of saying Americans, you know, transgender Americans, those with a mental illness, those who, by the way, at least 80 percent of which think about suicide, 40 percent have tried it. Um, it's a community where roughly 42 to 48 percent actually do end up committing mm-hmm. suicide. And, uh, and, and post-op it, the numbers get worse. Exactly. Better. Exactly. So these people who transition and then want to transition back, they can't. Mm -hmm. Um, In the medical community, it's okay uh, when you actually have these protests and rallies going around the country that are actually protesting for the rights to do it to their children. See, that's why this is an issue. Because, again, the agenda is never the agenda. The Mm -hmm. issue is never the issue. If I could teach you guys anything, if you've ever heard me say anything, the issue is never the issue. What they're saying is not what's really going on. There's always a deeper underlying thing. And it ultimately comes down to children. Because, I mean, again, they, they get out there. It went from, you know, safe, legal, and rare abortions to shout your abortion to taking Plan B pills right there on national television. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, well, if we can't kill them in the womb, let's destroy them once they're alive. Mm-hmm. I mean, so now you got TikTokers out there with their pregnant bellies out there screaming about how I'm going to love my trans baby. Your trans baby had not been born yet. I mean, I hope your baby grows up to be a linebacker for the New York Giants just to piss you off, <laughs> you know? But here we are. I mean, this you know, these people, and again, by the way, if you want to know what's going on in these people's heads who are talking to themselves in the mirror, talking to their, you know, unborn child and talking about how I'm going to love you, whether you let me love you or not, whether you hate me or not, I'm going to love you. You're my trans baby. <laughs> if you want to know what's going on, you need to go see Steve Dace's movie this month called mm-hmm. Nefarious, all about demon possession. Mm-hmm. You'll get a full glimpse of it. Because these people are hearing voices. They're hearing voices. Uh, but transgender Americans, they shape a nation's soul, proudly serving in the military, curing deadly mm-hmm. diseases. There's nobody in the military that would tell you that if they're going into battle, they hope that somebody's in gene, uh, a hormonal therapy <laughs> and switching their genders while we're being shot at. Because here's a person who's getting their period for the first time, <laughs> and I'm supposed to depend on you to watch my back. No, no. Let me do. Let me go out there with a dude who knows he's got a set of balls and he's willing to use them. Okay, I need full blown testosterone when we're in battle. But they're fighting for justice. They're running thriving businesses. They're holding elected offices. You know, they're raising families and a whole lot more. They still can't answer the basic question: What rights do they not? What have? rights do you not have? You got all the rights. But and they- where's the hate? So, like, I made the comment about oh, um, uh. You know, all these, again, everybody changes their corporate logo to a a trans flag or trans colors or all these things. And it's like, why don't y'all deal with the the Nazi swastikas swastikas and the Confederate flags? And I'm like, you really just went with the cringiest and fringiest of weird subsets of society with maybe 17 people in the entire (laughs) nation of a population of 330 million people hold to. I mean, there might be some rednecks in South Georgia Mm -hmm. who's still like, my God, I'm getting a swastika tattooed on my neck. (laughs) We're already not going to hire that fool. Right. We know. Right. We know. But you went there. When every mainstream corporate person in America is like, oh, we stand. I mean, Joe Biden said this. Joe Biden said, as kids, as kids, they deserve what every child deserves, the chance to learn in safe and supportive schools. Sure they should. Um... To develop meaningful friendships and to live openly and honestly. And as, as adults, he goes into more and more of that. But then, you know, they get into this whole stuff. And, they, and then he starts referencing last year's Club Q shooting in Colorado. It doesn't bring up the fact that Christians were just attacked at a Christian school. Mm-hmm. Reuters said former Christian school student right. goes in and shoots up the Christian school. Uh, all this crap that's out there. They don't talk about the, the fact that four of the, of the major big shootings that happened, the last four, was one non- non-binary and, and three trans- mm-hmm. transgender people. These are people who have a mental illness, and now they're weaponizing them. Was Club Q not the one that was non-binary? Yeah. So, yeah. so he it doesn't references bring that, it, but doesn't that, bring, doesn't up, bring that up the fact that it was a member one of, of them, community. member of their community, who did it. So, again, my administration's fault. To, I mean, at, at what point in time does Joe Biden come out and give a rousing speech in support of Christians mm-hmm. in America and Christian schools and churches? Never. And so, Oh, but you defend these pastors that get arrested for, you know, the church is a place where kids are getting, you know, molested and, you know, sexually assaulted. It's like, put them in the wood chipper yes. first. I don't care who's first in line. Yes, yes. I, the preachers, the pastors, the youth pastors— Stick them in the wood chipper too. But see, they're so tribal 
that they think that we are tribal as well. They don't actually have the principle. They're just tribal. This is a principle for us. They don't understand the activism that people like you and me do that actually leads to people getting arrested. Right. And we don't care if you're a football coach. We don't care Mm -hmm. if you're a youth pastor. We don't care if you are a Boy Scout leader. Y'all have no idea the stuff we've done. Yeah, the difference is people take their children to church not to get sexualized. That happens behind the scenes. People take their children to a drag show knowing what is going to happen. Knowing what they're putting them in front of. And (laughs) we actually, you know, in the churches, we actually go extra measures to make sure those things don't Don't happen. happen. Right. Those happen in the darkness. They happen in the darkness. There's a lot of churches in America that maybe you shouldn't frequent. Right. We don't go to the, I don't go to those churches. Right. You know, I mean, I shoot you myself. (laughs) (laughs) Hold your Bible up. I'll put a hole right through that. (laughs) It's all good. Uh, All right. Hey, Americans have had it. Obviously, uh, they're done supporting companies that rake in the hundreds of millions of dollars, sometimes billions of dollars, while trashing the country that made their success possible. Until recently, we had to take it. But companies like Patriot Mobile are building a whole new economy, one which embraces the values that made America the greatest country on earth. Patriot Mobile, America's only Christian conservative wireless provider. They offer dependable nationwide coverage on all three major networks. So, You can get the best possible service in your area. Plus, they offer a coverage guarantee. If you're not happy with your coverage, you can switch to a different network for free without changing carriers. That's that's a pretty big deal. All this, plus the knowledge that you are supporting free speech, the sanctity of life, Second Amendment, and our military and first responder heroes. Their 100% U.S.-based customer service team makes switching easy. You go to patriotmobile.com slash chad or give them a call, 878-PATRIOT. Talk to an American person on the phone that's happy to help you. Get free activation today with the offer code CHAD. I spell it Chad. Listen, folks, we got to stand together and support companies that share our values. PatriotMobile.com slash Chad or call them 878 Patriot. We'll be right back. So uh, Trump is flying himself to jail. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds funny when you say it like that. It does. It's you know, like, is the, the new... helipad just landing directly onto the prison? It or? is right there. Just <laughs> just rappel right in. Uh, of course, we saw the plane taken off, the Trump private jet, you know, and um, all the news was carrying it. Chris Cruz, who's out with allergies or something, um, sent me the flight tracker for Trump. Like I'm, like I'm going to watch Trump fly from... <laughs> West Palm Beach, Florida to New York. I think everyone knows where he's going. He's not fleeing. <laughs> right. That would be fun if it just diverted and he took off to Israel or something. Yeah, he ought to, he like buzzed the tower. Yeah. You know, just like circle it a little bit. Come in like he did with the Daytona 500 a few years ago. You yeah. know, just come in low for the crowds to enjoy. <laughs> Got to make an entrance. Yeah, but it'd be kind of cool if he hit like Lynchburg, Virginia and just went right. <laughs> Took a transatlantic route. Just, just to decided see how they to get respond. up in the jet stream. Yeah. Yeah. I'll see you guys yeah. in Madrid. <laughs> Let's go to a non-extradition country. <laughs> Listen, I, we laugh about it because it's so stupid. Yeah. You have to make fun of it at this point in time. I mean, Alvin Bragg, who's a New York DA, tell me, Alvin Bragg, what this indictment did to keep New Yorkers safe. Because this is a guy who's consistently turned violent, violent criminals loose, mm-hmm. reduced felonies to misdemeanor, and then you got this thing with Trump, which is out of the statute of limitations. And I love the people on Twitter who say... Do the crime, do the time. And it's like, I know you guys have been living for this moment. Mm -hmm. And congratulations Mm -hmm. on your moment of being able to see Trump turn himself in to New York law enforcement. Well, the crime technically is falsifying a business record. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, no politician's ever done that. Right. No billionaire has ever done that. Well. None of you have ever lied on your taxes. I mean, to answer your question, Alvin Bragg is very courageously protecting us from evil people who falsify business records. Yeah, who file the wrong document mm-hmm. or put it the wrong thing, legal instead of campaign expenses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, he's protecting all of us from, you know, those falsified records. Thank God he is. I hope he never takes down. a look at my W nines <laughs> or my whatever. I, I hope he never takes a look at anything that's on there. Ten ninety nines, W twos, whatever we file. Yeah. Our class. Don't, ta- don't tell him. Don't tell him. I love the IRS. <laughs> I am the biggest fan the IRS has ever had. That's not possible because it's me. <laughs> Do you love them so much? I <laughs> love them Do so, you love every them so much? quarter I write them a check. Oh I man, I love it. I send them a gift basket with a big fat check in that sucker. Um, and I, you know what I'm going to start doing? I'm going to start sending the check directly to Volodymyr Zelensky. 
<laughs> don't make it out to the IRS. That's don't make point. it out to the Internal Revenue. Just just put it. I'm going to make the check directly out to Vladimir Zelensky because that's where it's going that's a good at point. this point. You just skip the middleman. Yeah, I just put VZ on there. They know. <laughs> they know exactly where that thing's going. I just put VZ, put it on the envelope, Ukraine, and it gets there somehow. Mm. Somehow smart. it shows up in Kiev or Kiev or however they're saying it these days. That's smart. That's efficient. Yeah. Cutting, cutting the middleman out. <laughs> cutting well, the bureaucracy listen, out. America shut efficient. down because of COVID. I don't know how long it'll take for them to, those Ukrainians to get that tank money. <laughs> I don't know that anybody's back at work yet. So let me just That's send fair. it right to Vladi. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be like pen pals. I'll put it right on the memo of the check mm -hmm. and be like, Stinger missiles. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to need these. Stinger missiles. I'll send you some offensive weapons. It's generous. But meanwhile in America, meanwhile in America, um, they're giving lap dances to high schoolers. Mm. I, I don't know if you saw this or not, because the trans community, or the, the drag community, they, they're fine. They're completely fine with what, listen, you need to be tolerant and accepting, mm -hmm. be very inclusive in everything that's going on. In fact, we feel so strongly about embracing this community that we want to bring them into our high schools. Um, our favorite folks over at Libs at TikTok, favorite old gal over there, um, she had this clip to play on her Twitter. This is high school now. Now, what I want you to watch is not what's happening in the forefront, which is obvious part, where a teenager, a child, is getting a lap dance from a man dressed as, like a woman. But look at the uh, school administrators and teachers in the background. Look at their reaction. Play the clip. <laughs> That's brave. That's so bold. Brave is one way to put it. It's one way to put it. Mm-hmm. But I mean, if you watch that clip and go to Libs, at tic Libs of TikTok on Twitter and watch that clip where you can really see it, I mean, those people are just grinning ear to ear in the back. I mean, they're just so excited as they sit, you know, with their uh, pride deals right there in front. I got to tell you, um, as a mom, if a grown man chose to... This is a grown man on a teenage girl. Right. If a grown man... Uh, gave one of my children, teenager or not, a lap dance, um, you're never finding that man's body. <laughs> I'll be very clear. You will never find that man's body. Suddenly you're transphobic. Uh, I'm just embracing the term <laughs> at this point. Stop trans hate. I'm really just embracing the term at this point. Transphobic? Yeah. I hate the term, but you asked me the other day about a tweet. You said, is this too much? I was like, no, you're right over the target. Well, right, because, and then I went on to explain, like, you're, t you're taking the power from them if you just say, Sure. Yeah, sure. I am. Sure. At they've, this point, they've we, made, like at this point, we don't like you. I mean, they have made transphobic anything except complete uh, going along with all of it. Yeah. If you don't go along with it and enable it, yeah. you are transphobic. OK, great. Call me that. I mean, we Next got question. pictures from just last week at Tulips in mm -hmm. Fort Worth of a dude swinging his dong <laughs> out there and you got kids in a room. Right. We got pictures and video. What are you going to do about it? The kids in the room, which they like had to have, right? They were asked to age restrict it. They said, no, we have to have the kids here because this is what we want to do with them. Because that's exactly what they're going to do. Right. They, they know that it bothers people like us mm -hmm. that we say we got to protect the kids. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, by all means, we're going to do this. Right. So what we've started doing is we've started exposing it because I, I promise you there's people who own these properties that don't know that that's happening mm -hmm. The, their tenants and their lessees, they don't know that they're doing these things. A lot of, and we're finding that. Right. A lot, of the, a lot of the powers that be, they don't know what's going on. I'm talking to more and more property owners and more and more people. I had another conversation Saturday night with a, with a friend who said, I did not know that was happening at, uh, at a place. And it, totally disconnected with that situation. Yeah. So it's like more and more of these guys are waking up going, damn, this is happening in our, on our properties. Which is exactly why we do the work that exactly. we do. Exactly. So filled with hate. No, not really. We actually love you. We actually want you to. We, we actually love your kids. 
I, well, I mean, with the whole people say you're anti-trans, I'm like, I actually think I would say I care about them way more than you guys do because you're pushing them into a, an yeah. ideology and a lifestyle that will make them more prone to all of the things that you said at the top of the show. Yeah. You're pushing them to chop off body parts that they can't get back. You're pushing them into all of these things. I'm actually advocating I care more about them than you guys do. You guys are following the money. I'm yeah. actually standing up and saying I care about these people, yeah. adult or child. I care about them enough to say you are being pushed into this and you're going to regret it. And I don't want you to do that. Yeah. And over the weekend, we saw that uh, Bud Light, you know, apparently Dylan Mulvaney's living his best life <laughs> because, you know, I mean, Dylan Mulvaney's not trans. No. no. He, he talks about being visibly trans and his trans community. He's not trans. He's just a gay guy that likes to dress up. Mm -hmm. And he's playing a charade. And now I'm noticing after this whole Bud Light sponsorship, he's getting $10,000 plus for every time he promotes one of these products. And he's even doing Tampax. How's a dude... How's a dude endorsed by Tampax? Where's I he? actually don't know which one's kind of a bigger betrayal of their customers. Is Tampax or Bud Light? <laughs> I got to go. I don't know, man. That's what a good question. What hole is he putting that he's into? Putting it, I don't think he's putting it anywhere. <laughs> he's not putting it anywhere. I mean, all these all these different dudes are getting these these uh, Tampax sponsorships. I'm like, what? Uh, I, yeah, well, the try it. They I might. Understand. It's only going to be Chad's pads for me. <laughs> <laughs> Maxi Chad's. The makeup sponsorships I get. Those I get. Eh. I'm still you stupid. Can make, you can make, right. You can make more sense of them, yeah. But Bud Light, yeah. and I mean, Dylan Mulvaney's dancing around. Play, play the little commercial. Play the deal. Here's Dylan. The estimated haul time oh. is now less than 90. That 5 o'clock shadow is strong in this video. <laughs> And there's no such thing as a woman, one, that drinks Bud Light in the bubble bath. No. And they certainly don't wear a bra. No. In the bubble bath. This whole video is just so eerie. I can't exactly put my finger on it. There's just something. <laughs> it's, he's not talking. He's just dancing yeah. oddly in a bathtub. We thank you for your patience. Okay. All right, that's enough. So obviously, they actually put Dylan's face on a can, holding a Bud Light, and uh, I had really hoped that's what that ten thousand was... dollars will get your mm. uh, affiliate marketing sponsorship dollars. Is a dude in a bathtub wearing a bra, drinking a Bud Light, and uh, talking about this. Oh my God, there's this thing. It's in sports. It's called March Madness. Oh my God, enjoy a Bud Light. And uh, I had really hoped that that was an April. Did I do Fool's that good, joke. Kayla? Enjoy a Bud Light. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then you got Dylan prancing around here doing this thing, and it's like, really? That's your target our audience? I because don't women think don't so. really drink Bud Light. No. Self respecting dudes probably don't drink Bud Light anyway because it's a shit beer. <laughs> but then uh, the. <laughs> the ones that do probably are not aligned so much with the things that Dylan Mulvaney stands right, for. Right. So I. This that was fast. That's a fascinating deal. Now we're talking about it, so obviously here we are. But I can tell you, that's a downward spiral as a as a business model because it's like I'm just gonna go ahead and slap a a gay dude that thinks he's trans, who is and, and listen. I read the comments when I saw that mm -hmm, video. I mm -hmm. read on his page. I read the comments, and so many people are saying, "Dude, we like you." They didn't say "dude" because that would be <laughs> offensive. That would be wrong. But they said honey we like you we want to see you in your life we don't we don't want to keep seeing all these ads because all you're doing now is just as right that was the whole mm -hmm. deal that's mm -hmm. the grift people call you and me grifters mm -hmm. no we mm -hmm. actually advertise stuff we believe in mm -hmm. dylan mulvaney might have had a bud light can up his ass but he ain't <laughs> never drink bud light and i'm just saying that look dude that's the grift yeah he's grifting off of the trans community in order to do this kind of stuff. Anyway. All right. I'm proud of, uh, of some new folks we got on the, on the show here. New, new sponsors. Been looking forward to this new product that um, I'm really excited about it. This is a cool thing. This is one of those deals where necess necessity is a mother of invention. And I got a lot of guns. You got a lot of guns. And sometimes when you have to clean those guns, it's just kind of necessary hassle in life. I don't like doing it. It's a dirty job. But you got to do it. You got to clean your guns, all right? And the, the patches you use, they're messy. They're inefficient. And, and they got that rope, you know, that 
put the cleaning elements on it, like the boar snake. It's got that, you know, whatever. It's got a two-color pattern on it, which actually hides dirt when it comes through the barrel. So it's not good enough. You don't know if your gun is clean. So fortunately, I found this incredible solution. It's called Barrel Buddy. All right. Barrel Buddy is awesome. So it uh, it compresses to fill the interior of your gun's barrel and it makes sure to clean the rifling grooves and it comes in seven different sizes to match any caliber firearm you could possibly own. It's composed of polymers that don't leave behind the residual particles so it's safer for your gun too. Amazing concept. And it cleans by scrubbing and collecting the particulates and then it absorbs any remaining residue and buffs the interior of the surface of your gun clean. So uh, you can lubricate your firearm while you're cleaning it. So cleaning your gun look is important. It's a major step in being a responsible gun owner. And Barrel Buddy is a totally new concept and a better way to take care of your firearm. So get some today. I guarantee you are going to love these things. Go to BarrelBuddy.com today. Hear what I'm saying. BarrelBuddy.com. We'll be right back. All right, guys, welcome back. It's that time of the show where I must wax eloquent, so I'm going to attempt to, Sarah. You got this. <laughs> Let's see if I can get you all. Mm. Okay. I'm going to preach at you guys. Listen, there's a lot of things in the world today that really do get on my nerves. Obviously, you know that's true. I appreciate the opportunity that this show affords me to offload these things from my brain into your brain, and I realize that's a little bit selfish of me. Uh, I mean, how fair is it for, you know, for my catharsis to be your call of action day after day, time after time? But hey, you keep coming back, so it makes me think that you're listening and maybe you want this a little bit. Uh, let's talk about our kids for a few minutes and let's talk about their ineffectual taxpayer-funded wranglers who stumble about blindly in search of some monolithic yet elusive thing known as American education in the 21st century. Trust me when I tell you, it sucks. Now, I talk a lot on this show about the state of public education in this country and how important it is to get your kids out of public schools. I don't think you're listening. I don't think you're listening to me because none of it's changed. And, it, and it's, it isn't just that it hasn't changed. It's also that it doesn't change and there's no indication that it's about to anytime soon. Folks, listen to me. And you agree with me that public education is broken so far beyond repair that I, like many of you, don't really hold out much hope for it ever getting back inside the arguably safe box within which we once held it as a nation. And, and before we move on to the kids themselves, let's recap something important here. If you're putting everyone else involved on a grading scale, how do they make out? I know your kids get grades, but let's grade public education. How do you grade the government that runs public education? That's an F. <laughs> when certain metropolitan areas in America have schools whose, whose literacy is a 0% for high schoolers, folks, that's an F. 0%. I'm not making it up. I'm not, I'm not kidding. <laughs> Had to go Joe Biden. Not a on joke. You. Not a joke. <laughs> How do you grade the education itself as disseminated by the system that funnel, funnels down from that government? Well, it's a freaking F. And for good measure, how would you grade the, quote, public, which lends its name and influence to the whole affair? I'd say a D minus on a really good day. But let's talk about those kids for a minute. Parents are beating themselves up right now, uh, right and left, thinking that their kids are failures. You know why? Because a government-regulated public school grading system told them that their kid is a failure. Did you notice the words government, public, and school in that sentence? Because I assure you that I did. And do you know what conclusion I draw from all of that information? The people in charge, they don't give a damn. They don't have a, and they don't even have a damn clue on how to quantify the kids they're in charge of. So from the framework of standardized testing, which should go away, because it seeks to make lemmings out of all of us, to the hallowed clergy members of a dark and dangerous religion, filtering the personalities and futures of our next generation through their own duplicitous liturgy. Uh, you know, the whole, you had one job mean it, meme, it just kind of arises from a chaotic and widespread shitstorm to underline in bold print that these people do not have your children's best interest in mind or heart. So it absolutely positively not an accident that the coinciding rise of mind-numbing technology dovetails so very neatly with a generation of so-called educators whose fondest passion is quite often to numb the minds of the, war the wards beneath their tutelage. They don't care about your kids. Critical thinking, they kicked it out. 
It was fun and interesting for a while, but they don't need it anymore. They replace it with shifting and shallow concepts like concepts like equity and social justice and social and emotional learning. Uh, they'll firmly plant the seed in each child's mind that the muddy morass of collectivism and the embrace of warm and fri friendly incompetence on the world stage is not only that which is to be desired, but in fact is that which is to be mandated in the coming iterations of the soul of the nation. Oh, and just mix a little communism and socialism in there too, because Marxism mixes well with that. So. You know what I say? I say, give me a kid that's climbing the walls rather than some already blasted and hollowed out child who's sitting in a corner eating glue and mumbling as he stares into the void of a smartphone, a void which you can bet your ass is staring right back at him. Give me a mind that's fertile where the invading tribe of the left hasn't sown salt to kill the soil for a thousand years to come. Give me a child who is an empty vessel with a rocket full of energy attached, and I'll give you back a leader. I'll give you back a citizen worthy of the dangerous mission ahead that is life moving into the future. Don't you dare tell me that my child is failing if you have first failed him and failed him in such an extraordinary manner. It is you, oh mighty pyramid scheme, scheme of public learning that history is going to look down upon with disdain and sorrow. Not the precious children who've been led to the slaughter upon your altar. And when enough of us ring true to our own principles, when enough of us have had enough and we reach out a hand to steady the stumbling of our children at your hands, then remove them from your presence to be truly educated elsewhere. When a new generation arises to the top by having learned how to think in the world, then your days of harm will at last be done. You will be cast back into the shadows of evil and feckless human cognition where you most properly belong. And upon the smoldering heap of your wrecked ideology, this country will build a new means of educating its intellectually starved and huddling masses. One conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. And hey, public education, if that last part didn't sound familiar, I get it. You're stupid. You've forgotten all this stuff. And in fact, you've even stopped teaching proper civics a long time ago. But keep your head on a swivel because those of us who truly care about these children you're ruining, we're coming for you. And I guarantee you that's a promise. Ooh. Give me them wild ass kids. We'll weaponize the shit out of them. <laughs> You're free to take them, honestly, at this point. <laughs> I don't want them at 4 a.m. when they're throwing pillows. Good Lord, Sarah. Keep having them wild kids. We'll train I am, them. I will not have any more. You done, huh? Absolutely done. I love my children to death. <laughs> In fact, I love them so much. There's no more love to be spread around. That's it for me. It's they they have brainwashed a generation of kids. I know. They brainwashed them. I know. I know because I'm paying double. Yeah. I'm paying for those public schools and I'm yeah. paying to put yeah. my kids somewhere else where they don't have to be indoctrinated. Exactly. Just to protect them. I realize not everybody has that, you know. Uh, I get it. Privilege, I, I guess it. I should say. But you get out there and all of a sudden any critical thought, any critical thinking is perceived as something that is offensive. Mm -hmm. You're sitting those kids out there and they hear a thought that's differing from something that their buddies have told them on TikTok or whatever social media platform they've got. And they think, oh, that's hate. It's not mm -hmm. hate. Mm -hmm. It's the way the world is. There are going to be differing opinions. There's going to be people who think differently from you. But schools don't teach kids how to think mm -hmm. anymore. They give them a rote memory to take a standardized test. And then those kids stress the hell out and then hope that their progress is somehow recorded and reported by these morons that are running the system. I feel bad for this generation. I do too. Horrible. I know. We're all being dumbed down by it. Well, it's about time, Sarah. It's about time. For what? Relief factor. <laughs> Relief factor. I've listened to everybody from Glenn Beck, Sebastian Gorka, you mm -hmm. over the years. Mm -hmm. Relief Factor's finally showing me some love. Hey. After all the years, I've taken Relief Factor and it's helped me. Mm -hmm. Listen, guys, they're part of the show now. When you're going through your daily life living with pain, like walking, you know, it's, it's, oh, dude, it's terrible. And I've had it in my ankles with the gout, all the stuff. Listen, it'd be easier to get up and, and just be able to move around if you're not just your body's not all beat up with inflammation. I have dealt with severe pain for years, never quite finding the right way to get rid of it and, and just still try to go on and enjoy life and keep traveling like I do and working. All that was before Relief Factor. I learned about Relief Factor years ago. And once I began taking it, almost all of my pain just went away. And you know what happened? When I stopped taking the Relief Factor, the pain would come back. So... It's possible to be living your best life. I want you to give Relief Factor a shot. They, they're doing it with us. I'm so thankful to partner with them on the show now. I'm excited about it. And I want you to see what Relief Factor can do for you. I'll tell you, I'm a living, living, breathing example of, of how the stuff works. It's not a drug, mm -hmm. but it was developed by doctors to fight inflammation. And you can try it today. The three-week quick start is only $19.95. It's a trial pack 
Hundreds of thousands of people have ordered Relief Factor, and about 70% of them go on to order more. So go to relieffactor.com. You call them, 800-4-RELIEF, the number 4-RELIEF, to get the 1995 three-week quick start. Again, that's relieffactor.com or call 800-4-RELIEF. Relief Factor, feel the difference. We'll be right back. We don't believe you, Kayla. <laughs> we don't believe you. Oh, is this thing on? Ah, oh, boy. Oh, I've got six minutes here, and I really need to get into this. Um, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, yes. 60 Minutes, Leslie Stahl. Yes. Um, punched her right in the mouth. <laughs> Play that clip. Verbally, of course. And things she says that are over the top, like... The Democrats are a party of pedophiles. <laughs> I would definitely say so. They support grooming <laughs> children. They are not pedophiles. Why would you say that? Democrats, su Democrats support, even Joe Biden, the president himself, supports children being sexualized and having transgender surgeries. Sexualizing children is what <laughs> pedophiles do to children. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Wow. I can't okay. believe I'm sitting here with this person who's just <laughs> punching me in the face. Um, listen, you think what you want about Marjorie Taylor Greene. Oh, it's so uh, good. Represent Congresswoman from uh, Georgia. But let me, let me just tell you, there's this thing back when we, uh, we, we used to take this thing called philosophy in school. They used to teach philosophy. There's this thing called a syllogism. Syllogism says that, you know, if A and B are true and A and B are connected to C, then C has to be true as well. You know, they put together for C. So, so um, I would, late last night, I'd had a little tequila to drink. I did a bad syllogism on Twitter, but let me give you an accurate syllogism. Democrats support agendas that sexualize children. Everyone that supports agendas that sexualize children are pedophiles. Democrats, C, are pedophiles. Mm -hmm. It's a simple syllogism. Mm -hmm. If you support agendas that sexualize children, I don't care who you are, mm -hmm. and everyone that does that, and every Democrat across the board that I know of out there is supporting agendas that are sexualizing children, yeah. you're pedophiles. Yeah. So the syllogism works. She also could have brought up uh, Ashley Biden's diary. I mean, yeah, Joe Biden, about... she's, Ashley Biden on page 67 to 68 mm -hmm. of her diary we got a copy of it around here. Mm -hmm. Literally said, um, I used to try to take the showers later because I knew he would tr come try to get in the shower with me. Mm -hmm. That's the president of the United States. So, um, that's top, I'm top thinking, guy. I'm thinking that's kind of, if I were doing that, I promise you I know what you can accuse me of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. what you'd accuse me of. Mm-hmm. So, you know, again, oh, but what about Trump was around Jeffrey Epstein? Well, then let's see the client list. If Trump's on it, stick him in a wood chipper, too. Yep. But let's, let's prove some stuff here. Let's go. Which, don't you know, like, the, Trump is not uh, a part of any of that. Because if you he would were, know about it, if he they've they're trying to get him on falsifying business records because they can't get him on anything else like if he were on that list they definitely would leak that list not caring about anyone else just to take trump down exactly exactly that list would have been revealed a long time ago <laughs> but don't worry about it um kamala harris was in zambia they keep sending her to these why? places why why uh, they they sent her to the philippines with the fishermen they just want her. They just want her gone. They want her out of the way. I mean, listen. When it comes out that Joe Biden is not pleased with her performance, yeah. Wow. I mean, some dude with sundowners at the old folks' home has a complaint about the Chad Prather show. Whoopie doo. When the president of the United States is that dude with the sundowners and the dementia, and he doesn't even know his own job, but he's complaining about you, you're next level high. They keep sending her to third world countries, dude. I mean, they're the only people who don't speak good enough English to make her seem like she's not <laughs> retarded. Just shake your head and nod. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, while she cackles. Um, play that clip. She, this, this is profound, what she has to say to, uh, at, this, at this Zambian farm. Here we go. This is sweet. Oh, fantastic. She probably thought it was me. <laughs> you know, I got some. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay, sweet. Oh. 
She said, I grow peppers. <laughs> I grow peppers. Never, Anybody can grow peppers. Dead people can grow peppers. Never been to the border. Definitely grows peppers. Grows peppers. Okay. And they're looking at a Zambian, you know, um, greenhouse there. Mm -hmm. I grow peppers. I grow habaneros. I mean, peppers, you, it's pretty easy to grow. You just put them in the ground. They'll grow <laughs> like a weed. Are you going to the movie premiere tomorrow night? Yes. I'm going. Yes. Let's have a party. I'm so excited. I Listen. I don't know how hard you can party with faith-based movie producers and Steve Dace. Well, we're going to find going. out. We're going to find out. I've yeah. seen the movie and I, I'm still going because yeah. I want to I want to see the movie again and I believe in this movie. I wouldn't miss it on the simple fact that Steve Dace looks up to me. Okay? <laughs> so, listen. There is a movie coming out and I'm pretty sure you want to see it. I'm telling you, you want to see it. Uh, same people that make God's Not Dead and Unplanned, and this this movie just blows them all out of the it, water. It really Nothing does. against them. This movie is next level. It's yep. called Nefarious. You've heard me talk about it. So you've seen the posters or the trailer. It looks great, but it also looks a little scary like a horror film. It's not. It's not. Best of all, it's based on the book by uh, Steve Dace, and uh, it's more like C.S. Lewis' book, The Screw Tape Letters, and uh, I call it Interview with a Demon. It's a psychiatrist is called to a prison to meet with a convicted killer who's about to be executed. And the killer says he's a demon named Nefarious. And the psychiatrist who doesn't believe in God or demons has to decide if the man is insane, pretending to be insane or, you know, hmm, it's, it's a pretty creepy deal. I'm not giving away any of the movie by telling you this. Uh, but let's just say that the psychiatrist is a little out of his depth, all right? It's a supernatural th thriller, perfect for your friends who love scary films, but more than that, they love going to church or just 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 want a good argument for the things you see going on in the world today. You're going to have some great conversations after you see this movie. Nefarious opens nationwide the weekend of April 14th. I want you to mark the date. Get your tickets now at a theater near you at whoisnefarious.com. That's whoisnefarious.com. We'll be right back. Uh, a couple of big announcements. I'm not going to belabor one point, but 76forever.com. If you know, you know, it's going to be back up and running on Friday. So I'm excited about that. And uh, I'm going to be in Fort Smith, Arkansas on the 14th. And then we're going to be doing um, a, a songwriter series with my friend Kyle Hutton on the 18th at do, -Si do down in the Woodlands. It's a syndicated radio show where we, you know, talk about the inspiration behind different things that we've done. It's in front of a live audience. So you can get your tickets now, chadpratherlive.com. Then I'm going to be at 2920 Roadhouse with the Ragamuffins on the 20th of this month. Tons of stuff coming up all across the country. Don't miss it, chadpratherlive.com. And, of course, AmericanBeautyBySarah.com. Super big Thank things you. coming from her. I'm excited about. Thanks. And uh, if you didn't bail on me again, Glenn Beck is going to be on overtime with me <laughs> this week, okay? Going to have a little sit down, kind of come at Glenn from a different angle. And I got some ideas of things I want to ask Glenn. So do not miss it. If you're not a Blaze subscriber, then you will not get overtime. So go to blazetv.com slash Chad. Use promo code Chad. Save on an annual subscription. Don't forget to go to chadonblaze.com if you want to do a little shopping over there. We've got some cool stuff going on. And uh, so many things coming up. So many great guests that you do not want to miss. Big shout out to the Fact Pack right there in the live chat. You kids are crazy. <laughs> ah, but that's okay. You make it go around. You make the world go around. And I love you guys. So uh, we'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.